So you create your own field with your life experience. And this is a part that I want to stand back for a second and say, when I was a women's studies professor, and I was in, uh, studied a lot of um, a feminist uh, literary analysis. And one of the things that uh, women started really writing about in the 1970s in the academic fields was something called the authority of experience. The authority of experience. And at that time, it was actually a new concept. People did not think that authority came from your experience. Authority came from your knowledge and your training, which is a masculine model. Right? It's a masculine model. It comes from your training. It comes from knowledge. You have to have other people you can refer to, <coughs> right? That you can say, well, so and so said, and so and so said, and so and so said, and because I can show that, then therefore it's true, right? And the scientific method kind of works the same way. I can prove it, I can prove it, I can prove it, I can prove it. Your experience has nothing to do with your authority in that old masculine model. So what some of these feminist scholars were doing at that time was starting to say, hey, wait a minute. We have had tremendous experience for many, many generations. And it is potent and it is powerful. And when we can tell our stories in a way that brings out the medicine of that, brings out the wise woman in us, brings out the things that you actually really need to know to be a full human being, that, is a, that was a very radical idea. What God, how long ago was that now? 35 years ago? Okay. We take a lot of that for granted now because it's actually permeated out into our culture in a lot of ways. But it was an idea that had to do with how do you support people who've been on the margins, whether it's women or people of color or lesbians and gays or whatever identity was not considered to have authority, how do you create it? You create it through the authority of experience. So that is a tradition that you can really lean into by using your experience and your uh, um, story to be able to articulate the value of what it is that you have to do. So I want to ask you to do a, an exercise with me right now. Do you all still have, I, ha I brought some cards and I have some pens. Does anybody need something else to write with or c cards to write on? Anybody? You good? We're going to pass them around. Yeah, yeah, I'll take, yeah. Does anybody need a pen? Pen, anybody? No, good. Okay, you already got your pencils. I came prepared with soul signature marketing pens, but you already got your pencils. Okay. I'll take a pen. Okay. <laughs> take a pen. <laughs> oh, more pens. All right, this one lost its top. Hi. <laughs> okay. Yep. That's one. Let's see. Okay, I got a couple more. Okay. Okay. I got a few more. You take a pen. Okay. A pen? Okay. I think that's it. That's what I got for pens. I think that's all of them. Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to. Think about, one of the things we talk about in, in breath work is um, that there are two really important ways that our conditioning works. And one is through high impact experiences and one is through repetition. So things that we, you can have a high impact experience, it all can only happen once, but you remember it like if you thought about it now, you would remember it like it was yesterday, right? You, you have those kind of experiences, you're like, oh, that day when such and such happened. And it can be either positive or negative, right? It could be something, well, wow, I had such an incredible experience that day, that has stayed with me my whole life. Or it could be something like, well, that was the day that this happened and you've really had to digest it um, but those days that a lot of times are challenging are also the foundation of your transformation a lot of times. You know what I'm talking about? So I want you to pick one experience, one high impact experience, okay, that you think is related to what you're offering in your service to people today. Okay? So connecting whatever you're offering to people in terms of your services with a high impact experience that you had. 
something that happened. It could be something that was repetitive, happened over and over again. I mean, I know for me that my, I was really, I was very intuitive as a kid and I was also really good at math. Which one do you think I spent more time on when I was a kid? Math. math. You, and why? Acceptable. It's acceptable, right? People was like, oh, great, you do really well at this, awesome, right? That was a pretty high impact experience for me for a long time. I had to learn how to cultivate my intuition and that has actually been one of my greatest strengths. And it's one of the things that I now bring to you here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? So the fact that it was actually marginalized when I was a kid is part of what's made it as strong in me now as it is. So think about something like that and just take a couple, I'm going to give you, where's my phone? Um, I'm going to give you like a minute. And don't think about it too hard. Just take a breath. I want you to think about an, uh, an experience that you had, or it could be either something that happened over and over again, like for me the math thing happened over and over again, or it could be something that happened in one particular day that um, you know has now made, given you authority to be able to help others in the service that you're now providing. Is that clear? Okay. So that experience that you've had actually gives you a, th a certain kind of authority because it's your authority of your experience. And usually you've had to digest it a bit. Do you know what I mean? Like I thought Jessica gave a really good example of how her experience of shame, she's digested it and now she's able to offer to you some tools and tips and processes to be able to develop more resiliency in relation to shame. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So does anybody have an example of something they'd like to share? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just go ahead. Um, I actually um, got into doing hypnotherapy um, because I went to my massage therapist, the, a friend that I trade with, and I was frazzled beyond a, a complete frazzly mess that day. And she put on a CD um, by w her hypnotherapy teacher, and I experienced a level of peace and calm inside that I had not had before. And I was just propelled to get the training, and now I'm offering it to other people. Great, great. Okay, great example. Did you want to share? Yes, um, I got into my work because I was sick, bedridden for years, and could not be employed. So I had to become self employed. Mm -hmm. And I got into everything that I got into because I had to heal myself. So starting as early as first grade, it was a constant. That was impactful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sometimes our greatest challenge is what we think of obstacles and boulders in the way become the stepping stones for us to be able to do what we do later. And that, it may be that you then go and get training to help you to actually regularize it or become, develop a skill, but there was something in you that made it um, an impulse for you that sets you apart from anybody else doing what you're doing. So your ability to tell your story is, is priceless. Now one of the things that I want to say here is, is that many, many of you, I'm sure, if you had the time, if you sat down for an hour and I said write as many as you possibly could and all the different things that you've studied and trained in, you would come up with like 10 at least. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Right? When you start to do that, do you start to see how incredibly rich your life is mm -hmm. and how much you really have to offer? So your true value, the next thing I want you to do, and this is actually has to do with money, okay? But it's related to what I'm talking about. I want you to take one minute and write down the experiences, the, like the trainings and the certifications that you've had, how long you did them, and how much it cost. <laughs> 
Well, look at the investment. Look at the investment, right? Rather than thinking of your student loans, right? So what are the things that you've done? Did you go, did you go to higher education? Have you been certified in things? Did you do, did you do a year-long training with someone? Did you do a four-year-long training with someone? Whatever it might be, write it down and how much did it cost? How much time it cost in terms of time, in terms of dollars? So just brainstorm it. Take a breath. Everybody breathe. <laughs> now I want you to add it up in terms of time and in terms of dollars. Whatever you've got, it's, I'm sure it's not complete. <laughs> okay. Did anybody, uh, did, did that come across as um, surprising to any of you? You really kind of like, oh, I can see you're over there going. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Wow, what did you get? What did you get? Yeah? Uh, close to $300,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's what you've invested in your own education and your own experience, right? So just from a dollar point of view, I wanted to make this a little more tangible and say, okay, in terms of dollar, like I have 26 years of formal education. Mm -hmm. It's kind of obscene, really, when you think about it. It's too many years. Like the amount of dollar, I mean, it's like how much education and whatever, and then all the years of doing all the other things that I did after that, right? And so you're, are, what makes you think it's okay to say, I'm gonna charge $50 an hour to like, transform your life. <laughs> I spent eight years and a hundred thousand dollars to learn how to do this, but I think fifty dollars is too much, how about forty? <laughs> I'll do three for a hundred. Aha. Aha. So when you start to really look at your life experience and everything that has gone into who you are, everything that you've learned, everything that you've digested, all of your spiritual growth, right? And then can you imagine just saying, well, I'm a body worker. It's like, no, you're not a body worker. No. It's a tool. It's a powerful tool. So I wanted to say one little thing about flavor. Okay, so that's about what we just covered was really about starting to get a sense of your true value. Can you start to feel that from that exercise? Mm -hmm. A bit? Perspective. Perspective. So the thing I want to say about flavor is, okay, how many of you like uh, salty things? What? My favorite's potato chips. Oh. How many of you like um, sour? Okay. How many of you like bitter? Okay. How many of you like sweet? Okay. Um, how many of you like um, Chinese food? How many of you like California cuisine? How many of you like collard greens? Collard greens. <laughs> How many of you like um, a ribeye steak? Oh. oh, okay. These are all different flavors. Some of you share a bunch of them. Some of you are like, that's not it, that is not my flavor. <laughs> so your flavor, when you start to, I like the idea of flavor, when you start to pull all of this life experience together, right, your gifts, talents, um, skills and experience from this and all the other lifetimes and you really start to look at it and you start to step into it and you start to think, well, what's my flavor, right? What is my flavor? How can I make anything that I do recognizable? 
Part of it has to do with your point of view and expressing your point of view, right? It's one of those places where, like, one of the things I do with clients a lot is I'll say, start writing a blog and start writing about what you really think. Like what you really think. Not what you think everybody wants to hear, but what you really think. Because that's how you develop your point of view. People are gonna be attracted to you because of your point of view, right? So one of the ways you can develop your flavor is through your writing or through your speaking. And you're like, well, how do I actually do that in a way that feels good to me, that feels right to me? Usually it doesn't happen right away because you're usually kind of processing all of the beliefs you have about how you're supposed to do it for a while. <laughs> but when you think about what you want to take a stand for or what you really care about or the change you want to see and you want to be in the world, like, why do you do the work that you do? Why does it drive you? Why do you do that as opposed to something else? What does it matter to you? Why are you here? Why are you doing anything? To develop your point of view is very magnetic, not to everyone, because the truth is, when you develop your point of view, if you're good at it, you'll piss some people off. Yeah, piss some people off, right? You will. Because let's face it, everybody likes different flavors, right? We don't all like the same flavors, not at all. But the worst thing in, at all, of all is to be too vanilla. <laughs> Unless you like that. But you know what I mean? It's like... I happen to love vanilla ice cream on a good pie. <laughs> but the last thing you want is not to have any opinion, not to have any flavor. The last thing you want is just to be with a bushel over your head, just like anybody else. The last thing you want to do is to be being, showing up somewhere and saying, you know, I, I'm a bookkeeper. You know, I take care of animals. But there's no flavor. There's no you, there's no life experience, there's no authority. Okay, oops, I keep doing that. Okay, I'm gonna go through this last part quickly because I am going through time. Going through time, I like that. <laughs> well, you know, we are. Today is the extra day, yeah. right? Yeah. Today's the extra day. It is. It's an extra 24 hours. It just goes to show you we should be able to like open the calendar. I, always, I have these fantasies sometimes, being able to open my calendar and insert a week. <laughs> Can I just insert a week right there? I just, even a day. I'd even take a day. Okay. So this is about recognition. A couple key points. You do not need to be known in order to be recognized. A lot of times people confuse known with recognized. Okay, because we think recognition means that we have to be known in the world. Okay, there are plenty of people who are known who you wouldn't want to be in their shoes. I mean, think about people who are well known in the media, and some of them you're like, oh man, I would hate to be have that kind of attention. No, 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 I don't want that. You want to be able to be recognized by your people. So this piece is really about your people, because on the one hand, for you to be fully embodied, right, full embodied presence, for you to be in your soul signature, for you to have the authority of experience, for you to have your stories, for you to truly own your value, that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is who do you serve? What do they want? What are their concerns? How can you help them? What kind of language do they have? What wakes them up at night, right? What is going on for your people? So becoming recognized, is something that happens about between the dynamic between you and your people. Okay? You have to become recognizable to them. You have to become into focus for them. Because you know what? Everyone is selfishly focused. Every one of us is focused on ourself. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't say that as a negative. It's just the way it is. We're all focused on ourselves. And the underlying mantra in people's minds is what's in it for me? How does this relate to me? Why should I care? How is it going to improve my life? 
And one of the things that happens with, with practitioners a lot is, is that they have a specialized language and they think they know exactly what their people need and then they try to convince them in specialized language that they should get what it is they're selling because they need it. And their people are like, really? I can't even understand what you're saying. I don't, I don't get it. Or you're literally invisible. You're not recognizable because you're not speaking their language. You're not communicating with them. You're just in your own place, using your own language that you're comfortable with and you're not reaching out, okay? So you need to come into for focus in order to be seen. So when you are able to hear from your people what they really want and what they, really what they want, more than what they need, well, a lot of times what we'll say is sell them what they want and slip in what they need, right? Because people really do want what they need, but that's not where their minds are. You know, like if somebody's in pain, right, they want to get out of pain. You know that they need to learn how to exercise and that they probably need to change their diet and they need to not sit at their at computer for eight hours a day. But if the first thing you say to them is, you have to get up and get away from your computer and exercise, they're going to be like, whereas if you say, I can help you get out of pain, you're like, great, that's what I want. Then you can add in the things that they need. Does that make sense? So speaking to them where they are, that's how you come into focus. That's how you can be recognized. Being recognized is all about them and not about you. So the last thing I want to say about this is, is that Many people have an unmet need to be liked, to be approved of, and to be acknowledged, right? Which isn't surprising because a lot of times we had kind of coercive childhoods <laughs> where we didn't get approved of or acknowledged, right? So sometimes, and the reason I mention this is it is if you have that going on, and most people have some version of it, if you have that going on, it will get in your way of being able to really be with your people because you're going to be trying to get them to like you, approve of you, and acknowledge you. And you will bend over backwards and make yourself into a pretzel, including giving away your services for something that is not even near what your true value is in order to try to get it. Does that ring a bell? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you've got to look at what are the unmet needs that could be disrupting your ability to be clear and focused so that they can see you, you can speak in a language that makes sense to them, and you can be fully embodied as who you are. You can be um, in your authority of experience so much so that you don't need to talk about it a lot. Do you know what I mean? So much so that it's just your presence. Okay, so it's time to discover the flavor of you. <laughs> time to get the flavor of you. So I want to invite you, I'm doing an event on Saturday. It's here in Berkeley, um, and it is all about this material, but much more in depth. Um, so we will do some of the soul signature material. We will be going into some more of those um, pieces around visibility and invisibility. We will be looking much more at that question about recognition and how you can become recognized by your people, who your people are and what they want. And um, it's a full day of training and um, I um, really want all of you not to be lost in the crowd again. <laughs> it's time for that, okay? So for this day, I'm going to be um, offering a full day of training. It has, we have coffee and tea breaks. I actually added them so, some really nice food. And it's going to be down at the Double Tree at the um, marina, um, uh, right next to Chavez Park. And um, the, what it has been is it's been $97, and you can bring a friend for free. But for those of you who actually showed up here tonight, I want to invite you to come as my guest. I have a few spots left. Um, and I was like, I'm speaking here, and, and I thought, well, it's a perfect way for um, those of you who are attracted to this material to do that. So I have just a couple of things for you. Um, there's a, this is, so the thing about coming as my guest is that, um, just like Jessica did, I need to have a deposit, because it costs me, for every person who comes, 
uh, I actually have to pay the hotel, okay? I want you to come as my guest. You do not need to pay for it, but I do need a deposit from you, which you will get back at the door. If you sign up tonight and I have order forms here, you can do um, check or cash or credit card. Any one of them is fine. I will refund your, your money on Saturday morning at the door. But I have to have that because you know why? In California, we all like to go with the flow. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yes. So, I have to know who's coming. Is that fair? Okay. So it's a $67 deposit. What you can do is if you get one of these, you just cross out, put Goddess Collective on the top so I know exactly where it came from, and just put free ticket, and you'll get charged the $67, and, we will, and I'll give you that money back at the door. So let me just pass these around. Take one. And there's some um, postcards here, too, for the event as well. And one other thing I just want to um, offer to you is I have a CD which has um, a guided meditation called Who Are You in the Village, which is a part of my soul signature work. And it also has a uh, teleseminar called Creating Money by Creating Community. It's my um, village model of marketing. I didn't go into all of that um, tonight. But you, you're welcome to have this as my gift to you. I just need you, if you want to come to the event, you can just put CD on it, and I'll make sure that we send you a CD as well. Um, and, um, or if you just want the CD, you can just um, fill this out, and we'll mail it to you. Okay? All right. Thank you so much, everybody.